Hey there everybody, it is I, me, Alex, and today I want to talk to you about Freelancer for the personal computer. This is a uh, PC flight sim style game developed by Digital Anvil and published by Microsoft Game Studios. Now, uh, the thing that is uh, special about this is you play as a uh, young man named something, something, something. He is that forgettable, at least... Um, name and personality wise. Uh, he's uh, like your standard grif grifter type where I'll do anything for money and uh, one of the things about him is he doesn't like uh, know where his, uh, who, where his parents are, that sort of thing. Uh, your, your typical sci-fi mode of affair where as he's searching out uh, in the woods, uh, in the wilds, he stumbles upon uh, an alien invasion and has to stop it. Now, uh, the thing that's uh, great about it is that um, being a flight sim style game, uh, the controls are very smooth as well as the user interface. Um, like, you know, you have your main gun pointed out in a certain direction, and if you're targeting a bad guy, it'll give like a rough trace of where you need to aim your gun right now uh, versus where the hard point is in, in order for you to uh, uh, shoot the enemy um, as they're moving. And um, it worked really good. It was super smooth and flawless. The gameplay to me is, uh, you know, 10 out of 10. So, uh, so awesome. And uh, another unique thing about the game is that there's about like 30 or 40 different like galaxy kind of things. And uh, some things, uh, you know, that a lot of these space games do is like, oh, there's you know, 5,000 locations, and, like, you know, the majority of them are just generic, uh, like, you know, empty land spaces, and there's, like, nothing unique about them. The thing that's really cool about this game is that every single location has a secret weapon or a piece of armor, like a shield or plating, like a turret, that you can find if you uh, go look up information at, like, the uh, one of the local uh, pubs in each of the... Um, in each of the dock stations uh, that you get your, repar your, your, your repairs in. And, uh, you know, you can use those clues to go find, like, this rare, hard-to-find um, stuff that you cannot buy in the shops. As far as actual, like, uh, natives are concerned, you have three different ship types. You have a light fighter, a heavy fighter, and a uh, merchant vessel. The problem is, is that near the end of the game, Pretty much only the heavy fighter is a uh, viable, viable uh, ship to uh, to pilot because uh, the enemies have like rail guns uh, and they're very accurate with their shots. So you'll take a lot of hits. And uh, if you're using the merchant vessel, it's too slow. Meanwhile, um, if you're using the light fighter, you'll get quickly shot out of the sky. You know, so there are your alternatives where you have three choices, but only one's good. And um, the same thing applies with uh, weapon types. You have the ability to shoot missile launchers, uh, you know, um, to have, like, your own, like, little mini turrets to drop uh, space mines. And um, the problem being is, again, at the very end, you have one weapon type that does equal damage across all three uh, shields and weapons. So you are more likely just to stack those type of weapons instead of like actually diversifying your weapon uh, payload um so that's like the thing that's like really disappointing is that um you have all this uh illusion of choice but then you're always building up for the same uh end end game outcome and um uh, yeah, the voice acting is great. The uh, graphics, again, even for the time period, the graphics were really good. And you can, of course, you know, nowadays crank it up a lot. Uh, it's one of those games that uses DirectX 9, so it's easily compatible with modern, uh, even with modern systems. And overall, it's, uh, I'd, I'd probably give like a 7, 7.5 out of 10. Again, with 5 being average, so it is definitely an above average game. It's a high, highly quality game. But that limited replay value and the fact that um, the gameplay will always be that you will pick this specific style makes it toward a lot of the things that they uh, praised and um, 
advertised on the back of the box makes it where it's like it's it's a bit misleading, you know, a bit of a lie, you know, merchant pirate, you decide. And uh, yeah, the uh, every single galaxy has uh, different factions that have like uh, you know they're vying for different uh, uh, controls, and so one galaxy will have. Um, Pirates be your friends. Meanwhile, the other one will have like the uh, the uh, British Alliance forces uh, be your be your buddies. And uh, as the game progresses, uh, you'll gain uh, pirates to be your friends. Meanwhile, you'll have the uh, authority figures be your enemy, uh, which kind of negates the purpose of like uh, trying to get these guys to be your allies or your enemies because like you can attack them to make your your enemies you can help them to make you your allies you, you know again it's something where it's a neat feature but it isn't utilized too well and it's a good game uh it's one of those uh few games out in the wild where it's like around 40 to 50 dollars even used because you can't get this anywhere else besides the disc and it is one of those games where, yeah, I would actually recommend getting this, um, even for this price range. It's 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 those rare few moments where there's a game that's expensive that's actually good enough and will give you enough time, you know, gameplay time, to make it worth your while. Like um, on average, uh, this game takes about thirty hours to beat. Like again, like as you're exploring everything, trying to find all the secret shinies, you. Know, um, playing through the missions. Yeah, one final thing, and it's part of the gameplay that I thought was uh, really nice, is that um, the way that they do progression is that you uh, complete a mission, like a main story mission, and then afterwards you have to reach a certain level on your character, um, and the level just um, limits what type of equipment you have access to. So it's like, oh, you got to level 5? you now have access to rank two weapons and equipment. Uh, and then as soon as you reach a certain level, uh, they say, hey, go over here now and we'll start the next story thing. So it is open world. You can choose whatever you want to to um, actually continue the next story portion, but it, it does a really good job holding your hand for like a casual uh, player. And uh, that's just what makes it so uh, so pleasant to actually play through. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, hearing about this, and I will talk to you next time.